Well, North fans, we're in for a treat. We're checking in with Coach Reese Shaw. Reese, thanks so much for giving us your time. How are you travelling uh, during this uh, lockdown? Yeah, thanks, Heath, um, and thanks to everyone for, for listening in. Yeah, it's been a it's been a tough time, mate. To be honest, uh, I've um, yeah, the, the isolation doesn't sit well with me. I, I love uh, I love being at the club. I love seeing all the people and the players and the staff and um, interacting with with those guys on a daily basis. And to have that taken away from you is uh, really difficult. But uh, we're doing our best um, to work our way around that and. Um, hopefully everyone's staying safe and, and sound and that's the most important thing because um, the better we do um, as a community, the better we'll, uh, we'll be in terms of our footy and when we get started. So, With the fact that you've got the 46, 45, 46 players, I've done exactly our list as one or the other. Is that right? 40. Yeah, 45. Yeah. 45. Yeah. You've got so many people and then staff to sort of think about. So, and you're someone that loves that contact and likes that personal approach. So what are the things that you've been doing to stay in touch? Yeah, and yeah, it's, it's so hard, um, Heath, being um, that type of person. And I think we've got a lot of coaches in that, in that boat as well that we love that interaction. And um, oh, I just love the, the corridor conversations that I get to have with, with people at the footy club and you and you really miss that and I really value that and it's one thing that I've really noticed that's really hard to work around here but we we have done really really well in terms of um, making sure the players still have that connection with, it, with each other and um, and our staff so we, we put together a bit of a schedule that um, runs runs pretty well and I'm, I'm really proud of the, the work that everyone's done to put to, uh, put into this and um, to make sure it runs smoothly, and the guys are, are getting a lot out of it. Like we've uh, we've got something going on every day. I, I meet with I don't know four or five players, maybe six or seven each day, and just have a chat to them about um, how they're going, how they're dealing with the situation, how their families are going, um, and across the board, everyone's doing that uh, at our footy club. So it's it's nothing new. But the way we're structured up, I'm I'm really pleased with how it's rolling and. Um, the, the guys are really invested in it. So that's that's the most important thing. Um, and you're happy with the way the players, I suppose, have responded and bought into that sort of regular catch-up online? Yeah, we've, we've caught... I'm, I'm really conscious and, um, of the player mindset and um, this situation is like totally off the charts. It's very surreal and, and we won't go through this again, hopefully. Um, so we're all trying to do our best, but the, the mindset of a player is... Um, you, you want a bit, but you don't want you don't want too much. You don't want to be pressured into um, doing things that you don't want to do, especially when like there is that no end date in in sight. So we've got to be really careful about the way we we, we operate. But I think we've got a fantastic balance. Uh, the guys have done a great job um, in putting that together. We've got some optional sessions. We've got um, some compulsory runs, and I think it works really well. And uh, I love the way um, you can just jump on Coffee Club at eight o'clock in the morning and uh, there'd be three or four blokes um, just having a chat. And um, that's what it's all about, just staying connected and uh, making sure we're, we're driving each other to um, be the best we can be in, in such uncertain times. So you just said coffee club. Is that something that you guys have set up that's an optional drop-in thing? Yeah, so every day at eight o'clock and 12 o'clock, there's a half an hour window for um, our players to just jump on and, and catch up. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> there's been some interesting uh, stories. There's been some interesting um, characters on there. I think one of the first ones I went on was Jasper Pitt. I was walking his dog. Um, at the same time, he was on Coffee Club, and it was uh, yeah, that was an experience in itself. So uh, it's been look, it's it's just great to have those opportunities, and they're they're on they're in the schedule throughout the day, and uh, the boys have um, really made the most of them, and which is the the best thing about it. Do you ever think about what you would do if, you know, because it's not that long ago that you're actually playing yourself, how you would have approached this particular period as a player? Um, you always put yourself in the boys' shoes a fair bit. You've got to self-motivate um, as if it was a pre-season in a, in a lot of ways. Yeah, and it's and off the back of a pre-season too, Heath. It's, uh, we've, we've done one, played a few games, uh, Marsh Cup and round one, and now we're back into another holding pattern and, back into some training and, and running programs. So 
that's probably the most difficult part about it. And always, always thinking about um, the player mindset and uh, putting myself in their shoes because it's so important that we understand um, our athletes as best we can. And I think the the one thing that um, I've been I've been lucky enough to do. I've, uh, I've been um, I've got one of the boys' programs from uh, John Zier, strength and conditioning coach, and I've been doing it every day. So I, I kind of get a feel <laughs> of what the boys are going through. And um, look, I'm a bit of a different cat. I kind of love that stuff anyway. So it's um, but it's good. It's good to get a sense of what they're doing and, and how they're going and and what. Um, they have to put in each day so it has been a bit taxing and especially um, last week was a fairly big week for the boys but uh, it's it's good to see the guys are still up and about and and they they're looking for um, for footy to come around and whenever that is the our guys are going to be ready the the mindset's changed in our group and um, they're hungry and I, I love that and I, I love speaking to them about it as well so with that, there's been talk about the potential for hubs to be set up around the country where, you know, six teams in each different location might be uh, relocated for a three-week period or somewhere around that. What's your view on that? Do you think that's actually a likelihood? I think there's a fair chance of that happening. And if it was a fair chance of happening, are we, we ready for that? Do we want that? Yeah, it's really interesting, um, the, the thoughts and, um, of the community and, and the, the wider footy world on what's going to happen it's it's going to be so interesting to see what actually does happen uh, there, there are a lot of theories floating around and um, I think the hubs um, the, that's one of the points that's been discussed and, and to be honest I'm not even really sure if that's going to take place but I think that the main thing is that um, we do the right thing uh, by the community and, and we are in line with what the government um, and what's best for our people and uh, I think the AFL are doing a fantastic job in um, in that regard. They are taking their time. They're not making any rash um, decisions. I think they'll they'll play it as they see it. And when we do come back, we'll be back for good. So um, whatever way they go, I know it'll be the right way. And if it is a hub, well then we'll we'll have to do that. But um, I know they're pretty keen on getting their game, getting the full season underway, the 17 games with only 16 to go. So that's going to be pleasing. I can't wait to see how it looks. And whatever happens, we'll be ready. This could be the most stupid question you've ever been asked since you've been a head coach, but you would be in favour of us retaining our points that we won from round one because there has been debate about whether it should go back to, to zero and everyone starts again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot, yeah, I... Um, I heard that from my old my old coach uh, Mick. Um, he's he's probably got his reasons, but I'm I'm fully in favour of keeping our points <laughs> from round one. And that was one of the the best wins I've I've probably been involved with Heath and uh, in my time as a um, at the AFL level. It was I know there was no crowd there, but um, the feeling in our group and um, around the club afterwards was fantastic. And when we put um, a lot of blood, sweat and tears into our pre-season and to get that result round one after not playing um, that good a footy in the first half, um, I, I would never give those points back if I had a choice. It was uh, one of the great games, one of the great victories I've been involved in. The second most stupidest question you've probably ever been asked since you've been a head coach is um, around the draft. Do you think the draft should go ahead um, this year, even if there isn't another game played for under-18s and and those competitions? Yeah, look, I think it's, I think it is too important um, for us to, to not have a draft. I, I think the, it's one thing, it probably it affects the, the kids as much as anything. Um, that they've got their hearts set on um, getting drafted and the processes that they've gone through. And, but I think it's really important that um, we do get a draft away, whatever that looks like. I think it's, for the, for the competition, it's um, and I think it separates us from from other codes in Australia that we've got this um, line to the top. Um, there is a, I think it's sorry, there is a um, a pathway that the guys can go through to get to AFL level, and I think that separates us from other codes that we do have that from junior level to club level to under 18s to. Um, the AFL and the draft plays a huge part in that. So 
I think that's one thing that separates us and it's one um, thing that I think we should keep. If we do get a green light, a date, how long do you think the players are going to need to be together before you could launch into round two or the second game for the season? What would be ideal, do you reckon? I reckon if we gave them three days, Heath, we'd be right. Um, <laughs> but, no, nah, look, I, I, yeah, there's been a few n n numbers um, thrown around, but, look, I reckon three or four weeks um, would be ample time for us to get ready and prepared. Look, uh, the, the most important thing, I think, is for um, AFL to be played. And um, when we're given the tick off by the government and the AFL to do that and get ready, I think um, four weeks is ample time for us to get going um, and get uh, get the show on the road. With the education component of um, of this year, so you've pretty much got the preseason games and then that St Kilda game. You've probably reviewed that down to a you know millisecond i imagine um that particular game what other things can you draw on to keep educating the players do you look at do you have to look at other games from other teams that we weren't even involved in how do you tackle that yeah it's an interesting question Heath. we we have done uh, well, again thinking about the players mindset um we didn't want to go too early on that because uh we knew that it was going to be a fair amount of time before we got going again so we've we've kind of held off on that we've we've got them into we made sure that they were um, safe, they were, they were healthy, um, they were back with their families. That was the first point of call. We wanted to make sure that was all taken care of. So that was probably the first week. Um, second week, we started to get them going into their, their running programs and um, just to get them back into um, footy mode a little bit um, in terms of their training. And then third week, we've, we've started to do some education, um, doing some reviews on the St Kilda game, which um, I've watched a few times, mainly the second half. Uh, but um, yeah, look, it's it's um, it's always going to be a challenge. But I, I'm actually loving um, getting my hands dirty again and getting back on the tools and and doing some um, coaching in the specific areas. And I'm I'm looking forward to our footy ad every week. And um, we'll we'll pull apart the game still, but we'll also uh, delve into um, some other games and, and maybe even some uh, personal. Um, uh, line meetings and individual meetings that we can go through um, just to fill up the time a little bit and make sure they're learning all the time because it's this this is important that we can make the most of this time this is an opportunity for us to, to get better one last one before we let you go do you, do you worry about the skill level side of the the game i mean um there's the fitness component but skills are probably going to be impacted um in some way shape or form yeah, and uh, with only you can only um, train with the the single person other than yourself. So it's um, you, you're very limited in what you can do. But um, our guys have been pretty uh, pretty good in coming up with drills um, themselves between pairs. So it's it's been interesting to see how that's evolved, and I think that's been uh, that's been brilliant. Um, some of the stuff that I've uh, been told from the from the boys that they've been doing, which is which is great. So they they've been making the most of it. They've been adapting, like we spoke about when we first uh, when we first stopped. So it is it is a bit of a worry, but um, we'll make the most of it, and that's all we can do. And I think the boys are, are itching to to get going, but um, they're also making the most of uh, what they're doing now. All right, well, mate, thank you so much for allowing us um, a little bit of an insight into the head coach's uh, schedule and routine around this um, this time. Um, we really appreciate it. It's been fantastic to catch up with you and see you. Thanks, Heath. And uh, just to everyone out there, make sure you stay safe and, and stay healthy and um, make sure we look after our family and loved ones because that's the most important thing at this time. Thanks, guys.